Welcome to Technically Speaking. I'm Steve Brown. I'm the product manager for Press Break at Wilson Tool. And today we're going to talk about the difference between the Z1 and the Z2 punch holder. So a fairly common lingo in the industry, but if you don't know the difference, it's hard to know which punch holder to buy. So we'll look at a Z2 punch holder. We'll look at a Z1 punch holder, typically the holder that's loading into and underneath a punch holder. And we'll look at the tool that loads underneath both of them. So we'll go through the technical detail on center lines. We'll show you examples of it and pictures. And then when you're done watching this video, you should be able to order the correct punch holder the first time from Wilson Tool. So let's get to it. Okay, let's start by identifying the situation that might require you to know the difference between Z1 and Z2. So here we have the press brake. We have the punch holder in the press brake, but what I want to do is extend the height of my punch so I can do something deeper like a box. So I want to buy this punch holder that I just loaded. I want to buy that to extend my height and make sure that the tang is the correct tang. And from there you'd see your punch load into the bottom of that holder. Okay, so now let's take a look at what detail makes a Z1 versus a Z2 center line. So as you look at this, you see the press brake, you see a punch holder, and the punch holder in the press brake traditionally on an Amata press brake would be Z2. Other press brakes may not be, so don't assume that just because we're showing this in the video that you have a Z2 upper beam. It's really easy to tell though, because if I have the inside of this tang and I see the center line, from the center line of this punch holder to the inside of the, the, the tang is 20 millimeters. If I take that punch holder you just saw me stack, and I stacked it underneath, you can see the center line stayed real nice and straight. From the bottom of the punch holder straight up, we've got a nice straight center line. But from, on this punch holder, we have to know that the center line here is now Z1. And Z1 is going to be a seven millimeter dimension from the center line to the inside of the tang. So that's the difference between this punch holder and that punch hole holder with in, dimensionally. If I stack a tool right underneath, you can see the center line stays the same. So what that tells me is that the punch must also be Z1 because it stacks. The center line stayed nice and straight and it stacked. If I opened up our European style catalog, went to the back on page 42, you'd see a real good illustration of the difference between Z1 and Z2. Z1 is right here, and you can see the seven millimeter center line, reference to the inside of the tongue. And down here on the Z2, you can see the 20 millimeter center line to referencing to that inside tongue. So there it shows you the, the difference. So when you go to order and you're on this page, a red light should come on to say, I know there's a difference between these, but what is it? And what style of machine do I have? And how am I going to use the punch holder? If I was to put this into the upper beam of Amata, we said that that's Z2 most commonly, so I would use this punch holder. If I was simply stacking punch holders so that I could get more height in my tool, I'm always going to use the Z1 holder because Z1 stacks under Z1 and keeps my center line. The one exception in the catalog is if you look at the next page, you'll see this nice deep punch holder, traditionally designed to go right into the upper beam of an Amata brake because it's Z2 or any other brake that's Z2. But if you look down here, we're showing a little illustration in a clamp assembly that actually changes the center line. So I'm showing you this because this is the one exception in the traditional European tool line that we have that would allow you to use a Z2 holder and convert it to whatever it needs to be on the bottom. So if your brake was a Z1 upper beam, I could still put this into the Z1 upper beam potentially and just convert it to Z1 on the bottom. So this is what would happen if I just said, I'm going to take this punch holder, I'm going to stack it under here, and then I'll just, I don't have to buy another punch holder that way. The problem you'd have on a Samata press brake is I would load this punch holder, clamp it in, and as I look at my center line now, I just clamped a Z2 into a Z1, which is going to step the whole center line backwards, and it's fairly easy to see. I just step backwards the center line. It, the center line would be way back here. Now when I put my punch in, I've got a problem. The problem isn't here. 
Because you can see it still stacks. I, we said every punch holder is Z1 on the bottom and all tooling Z1. So it still stacks straight with this punch holder, but that didn't alleviate the problem of stacking the wrong punch holder. So now you know the difference between Z1 and Z2 center lines, and hopefully that helps you order the correct punch holder the first time out of our catalog. If you like what you saw, like us below. If you have an idea that you'd like to see us cover in the future, use the comment field right below this video to send that message to us or send it to the email that you see on the screen. And technically speaking, now you know.